Amen. Amen. How many of us have been blessed since the beginning of the meeting? Uh, look at somebody and tell the person you are blessed when you part. Are you here? Are Can you repeat it? why you are having a seven hour uh, prayer session demanding for angelic help and you are asking me to be part. I'm just wondering. Hallelujah. Any person here, any above for any. What do you have to do with angels? Are they necessary at all? Are you sure? Okay, so I want to give you a simple question. If you have the Holy Spirit, why do you need an angel? <laughs> Hello. You have the Holy Spirit, why do you need an angel? I need an answer. It's an organized service. And I'm closing us. So, yes, why do you need an angel? Uh, I think you all have your rooms. You all have your rooms. Yeah. Okay. So what role will an angel play that the Holy Spirit can play? Okay, um, we have angel Gabriel. Okay. For sending the food for me. Gabriel, oh, wow. <laughs> Okay, who else is called Gabriel? Apart from you. So he's the only one. Are you Gabriel? Sylvester, Gabriel. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. You were saying something. We have angel Gabriel for giving information. So he was around, and the Holy Spirit was around. But he was chosen to give how did you know Gabriel was the one in charge of information? Because he gave most of the time recorded the Bible to the Bible. Let's clap for him. Hallelujah. That's that one. Sylvester. is the angel called the angel of God's presence and he's the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is God's personal angel. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. You have done as well. We began with you and your brothers this far. Lord, as you send us off, let us be released into a level where we begin to see the manifestation of what you have brought us here for. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. So I want to salute all the generals. Can we put our hands together? Let's have a Are you a general? Apart from the general, general, if you are a general, wave your hand let me see. Oh, okay. Do the generals hand over? Do you hand over? On campus you hand over, but you are still generals. Okay, it's like using the word angel. Some people will try to tell us there are archangels, there are different, different classes of angels. I'm actually bringing out a book, and the title is Understanding Angelic Ministry, or Understanding Angels. God's special messengers. So, to put me here, it's like you want me to bring some of the apoy in the book. <laughs> anyway, I want you to buy the book. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to buy the book. So, when you study the scriptures, you will see that God created angels, what we call angels. That is, if you separate the Holy Spirit from the rest of the angels. He created them for his own help. So angels are actually God's special messengers that he made to give him help. Hallelujah. God doesn't need angels to do anything, but he made them to provide help. Praise the Lord. So, in the pre-Adamic world, the first set of beings that were created were the angels. All angels were created in the order of animals. 
Praise the Lord. All angels. They were created in the order of animals. So if you hear about Lucifer, what comes to mind? Hello? Serpent. Are you sure? <laughs> Lucifer serpent. All angels were created in the order of animals. All angels in the scriptures. Hallelujah. And there are about 15 classes of angels. 15. The closer you are to the throne, the more powerful and important you are. So if an angel is very close to the altar or to the throne of God, it does not only define his assignment, but it also defines his rank. So we are told in the scriptures that Lucifer was the angel in the mountain of the Lord. And the guy was able to convince about one third of the angels to follow him. How was he able to do that? He was an anointed cherub. He was a cherub. We have cherubs that have six wings. We have cherubs that have five wings. We have cherubs that have four wings. We have cherubs that have three wings. We have cherubs that have two wings, but not one. And we have cherubs that do not have wings. So in the order, those that we call angels, they don't possess wings. No angel has wings. From Genesis to Revelation, no angel ever appeared with wings. So angels don't have wings. They have hands. Praise the Lord. Are we together? We are going to pray very shortly. So why did God create them? He created them to give him help. Only angels have the assignment of providing help to both God and his creation. Angels are actually wings. They are wings. So an angel doesn't need to travel. Wherever there is a wind, you can find air. The angel can appear there. Praise the Lord. They don't travel. They are wings. Psalm 104. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 1. They are wings. Psalm 8 was inspired by angels. The angels were sitting down and wondering. Once in a while there is a glory. The place is full of light, unapproachable. Then all of a sudden the light will be moving. Then as they are observing, it lands, goes out of heaven and appears on earth. And it lands in the garden of Eden. So they were wondering. When we consider the majestic display of your splendor, the things you have created, all the works of your hands, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you visit him. These were angels talking among themselves because God doesn't visit them. God, doesn't, God does not commune with angels like he does with man. God's talking mates are human beings because angels were not created in his image and in his likeness. Are we together? Yes. Hebrews says, to which of the angels did he call his sons? For no angel was called his son. So, when you read Job, when he said, and the sons of God gathered together and Satan or the devil was also there. It cannot be angels. It can't be angels because none of the angels has he called a son. He says his sons gathered. So it can't be angels. So we have been given wrong theology. The reason why the Bible says we will judge angels. We are not going to judge the angels that are falling. Right now, there are angels misbehaving. <laughs> Those are the angels we are going to judge. Job chapter 14. To which of the angels does God charge with error? Some of us here, 
Angels are following us. I remember some time ago, I think the same place, when we used to meet here to pray, we came for one of the meetings and there was a lady I picked at the back. Two angels were standing behind her. And I asked the angels, what are you here for? <laughs> they said, one said he just returned from Spain, the other said he returned from Nigeria. And they are here for four people. And I asked the lady you are behind, are you here for her? They both said yes. One said it's called peace, the other said it's called wealth. I said, okay, I will tell the sister what you are telling me on one condition, that whatever you brought, you give me my share. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Give me my share. The angel said no. So I also didn't communicate the information. Yes, he said, did. <laughs> We were created to profit the kingdom. Anything we do must bring profit to the kingdom. So anything I do that does not profit the kingdom, forget it. The account we will give is not on the capital, it's on the profit. The giftings and the callings of God are without repentance. It's a gift. But a gift that has been given to you must produce something. When we get to heaven or come into the kingdom, we are going to give account of what we have been able to do out of what we received. Are we together? So, we have wrong theology about angels. Wrong theology because somebody somewhere has said that if you, if you decide to delve into spirits, the realm of the spiritual, you are delving into occultism. So things that we have access to that we should be using, we have sidelined them and boxed them under the untouchables. There are Christians whose angels are following them. They are supposed to release what they have come to give to them to them, but they are not. Sometimes an angel can appear late. On your body. So make sure three o'clock. No, do three ten. I am one here. Can appear late. Sometimes they can willfully do things. Somebody said angels are like robots. What they are told is what they do. They would not have defected loyalty from God to Lucifer. How did Lucifer win their loyalty? This is it. Lucifer was an anointed cherub. He had access to the altar of God. He could go into the, into the altar and he could come out. He was a man who was endowed with a lot of abilities. He was given an ability to taste that which human beings taste, yet he was an angel. And so in the realm of the spirit, when God speaks, depending on your degree of closeness, will determine your understanding. The closer you are to God, the better you understand the things of God. The further away you are from God, the more you misunderstand the things of God. The secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him and he would not withhold any good thing from them. Somebody said that God does not have favorites, but God has intimates. The closer you are to God, the more secrets he will reveal to you. That is why it was the norm of Jesus to spend a minimum of four hours every day before the presence of God. Minimum. A great while before day. He will go to a solitary place. And he will pray all night as his custom was. The disciples never had Jesus pray on his own. They never had the words he prayed when he was on his own. So one day they said, Jesus, John the Baptist did the same ministry you are doing. But he taught his disciples how to pray. You dear, we beg you, teach us how to pray as John has taught his disciples how to pray. Then he said, when you pray, you pray in this manner. Our Father, which acts in heaven, 
That model prayer was not Jesus' model prayer. It was John the Baptist's model prayer. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are we together? Are you enjoying? We are closing. So I want you to relax and enjoy. I'm giving you just small, because all the ministers who have led, they have led us powerfully. I mean, I wasn't here, but I could feel it at where I was. Let me push up with baby. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So, the closer you are to God, the better your level of understanding, the better the level of your revelation, the better your vision, the better your knowledge, the better your wisdom. So, when God speaks like I'm standing here in the realm of the spirit, if I were to be God, those who understand what I'm saying better will be those who are closest to me. Because your closeness defines your your realm of understanding. I pray for somebody today that you'll be closer to God than ever. Amen. From today, there will not be any gap between you and God. Amen. He will speak to you without any interference. Amen. Nothing will block the signals. You will receive signals without any interference Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, sometimes... You can be in a place. Let's come into the realm of gadgets. You have a phone. And you are in a room. And there is Wi-Fi. Do you know that there are times you can be very close to the router and still get one bar. And somebody is outside and he has four bars from the router. Why is it so? The paths of communication, when there is a clear path, Without interference, there is a better signal. Why are you clapping? What are you clapping? The revelation. <laughs> so, Lucifer was very close to the altar. There were seven or eight, according to the Hebraic culture, about eight angels that were in that rank. And we call them the operational angels. You know, the Bible said, when a demon is cast out of a person, Matthew 12, verse 42 to 45, the spirit goes to a dry place. Demons were created to occupy only dry places. But some of them, out of disobedience, have taken water bodies, trees, <laughs> lands, human beings, animals. That is not their dwelling place. Their dwelling place is the dry place. Dry. So if your pocket is dry, it means something is wrong. Praise the Lord. May you live here with no dry pockets. Yeah. Angels can put money in your pocket. Do you know that? Some people call it miracle money. They can do it. It's money there. Sometimes I'm home when I need money. I call money into the pocket. Say, so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive 200 Ghana cities in three of my pockets. And I'll pray till I find it. You, you think, oh, I left it. I didn't leave it. But as far as I'm concerned, I didn't leave any money. <laughs> One day, I needed some money to do some stuff. I said, today I need money. I locked myself up in my living room and I began to pray. I said, Lord, to test that what I'm praying is right and scripture, I need $500 and I need 500 Ghana cities today before the end of the day. How you bring it, I don't know. I don't know whether I qualify for it or not, but I need it. I prayed eight hours. When I was done with the prayer, I had made 16 calls from one man. The man's office is at industrial area. The company is called Pesol Systems. So I picked the phone and I called him back. And then he said, oh, Apostle, we just, management just met and we said that today is the last Friday. It was the last Friday of the year. And so they wanted to do a quick Thanksgiving service. And so because I am like the chaplain to that company, 
I need to come anywhere I am. I should get the next available taxi and come. I was in Medina. I said, yes, yes, yes. Before he said, before he said, we need you to come. I said, I'm coming, I'm worried. <laughs> because I never step in that of when I'm even in circle and I need money, I just pass by. So I was here to do something, I passed by. With 200 million for me. <laughs> so for them to call, and I've been praying for eight hours. So I sat in the car. I moved up and taxi some rickety car. Taxi was passing. I said, stopped. Wait my percent. I said, I I said, oh, can I teach you? I said, don't mind the body. <laughs> then I sat in. Bang. The guy had. Sometimes don't mind the car. <laughs> mind the driver. The guy was using shortcuts. The traffic. He, he, he drove. Brought me to a traffic junction and he said, ah, the fact of junction, Gabi, would you have my uncle fight you PSE? Tell him no I cut the traffic in the room. They do a trinity. I said, my father gone. The guy was meandering them. Sometimes you meander and it's a convent. What can they hear you blocking the room? I don't know who's a shortcut here. We reach circle record time. And then I saw the director standing on the compass. I said, Drive a car, bam, because I have potential. One thing I make an answer. They do one point there, we see our own here, we here. We go in this car. I had no money. So I said, drive, drive. You see where the two men are? Drive there. So when he was getting close, the, the man was moving. He said, ah, driver. Then he saw me. He said, oh, I'm person. I came down. And then he saw our person. Please, um, the services are started. They are praying. So you go up. I'll take care of the price. The fair. So I didn't even, I didn't ask the driver how much we are paying. He said, driver, tell me why. When I went, the, the guys you could tell they have been waiting like you have been waiting. So I just entered and the guys saw me. So our course is here and you take over. So I just moved them. I looked at the atmosphere. As I was looking to the atmosphere, my left eye was seeing five hundred dollars. My right eye was seeing five hundred dollars. So I then I just raised the song. Hallelujah! No matter so da da da. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! No, no. We sang, and then I prayed. What I have ways of our different kinds of prayers. So I said, Father, I said, let us pray. I said, Father, we thank you. This whole year, you have brought us this far. You will take us beyond. I speak into the destiny of this company. I put you above every other company in this sector. I demand that by the end of the first month of the next year, you shall be placed as one of the three companies in the Ghana Club 100 companies. To Bumpire this <laughs> and it happened in January 15th it was announced as the third top company among the Ghana Club 100 and the number one IT systems company <laughs> hallelujah yeah. when we closed the director came said let's go to my office I said no 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 <laughs> we entered the office sat down then I saw one envelope in a book. I said, way better for kind of <laughs> Then he said, excuse me, Apostle. He went out, called the accountant. He said, accountant, um, Apostle's transportation. I said, that one is Ghana City. <laughs> so they packaged it. When he came out, sitting down, said, I know you need to do it. <laughs> Listen, some of you don't know how you will celebrate Christmas. But I decrease supply for you. I decrease supply for you. I command supply for you. In the name of Jesus. Corona Jiska Yabuano. Compress it according blessing. And give it to you in Jesus' name. See, by this declaration, somebody's angel is under pressure. Amen. So the man brought the envelope. He said, Oh, Apostle, this is from the company for your fuel. I said, Thank you. I was expecting the next. <laughs> then he sat down. He said, He pulled his book. 
and then he took out the other envelope. He said, this one is for my, myself and my family. You've been there for us. You've been, oh, I don't see Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so, <laughs> I took it. I didn't know it was for me. I didn't need to know how much. I didn't need to know how much. Because I had placed a demand for it. Amen. Are we together? Yeah. That is the work of angels. You are a flame. The Bible said, he's made us flames of fire. And he's made his angels winds. What do winds do with fire? They blow them so it can flame ma more or much. So when your efforts and your energy and your strength is coming down, you need an angelic assistance. They are in the realm of help. When they step out of that realm, they must give help. Jesus said, if my kingdom were of, if my kingdom were of this world, I would have demanded God to give me helpers and he would have given me legions of angels. Now listen to this. When he was saying that, he had already exercised them. Because when he came out and he met them and he asked, whom do you seek? And they said, we are looking for Jesus, the king of the Jews. The Bible said, he said, I am he. And 600 soldiers, they all fell under the anointing. When you speak, the one that carries your word to where it must go to is called an angel. So when you wake up and you say, ah, you know my day, you are telling the angel to bring you know my day. My home family, you are telling the angel to bring you my home family. Because they are sent as servants to carry out the biddings of the Lord for his saints. Never be in the habit of confessing negatively because you put your angel in a fix. Always speak positive. Some of us have come to pray. Not all prayers have been answered. Some of them are being sorted out. <laughs> because the prayer you have prayed, they've carried it. And they are sending it. And as they are carrying it, look, you know, you, are, you have prayed some prayers you are not supposed to pray. You have made demands that you shouldn't be making. So they are wondering, can they carry it? Angels have strength like human beings. They can be weak. They can be strong. Depending on your degree of closeness determines your strength. Your degree of closeness with God determines the ministry the angels that are given to you. The more closer you get to God, the more stronger and of more wisdom and of more understanding and of more strength are supplied or deployed for you. The further away you get from God, the more you become vulnerable and unprotected. Praise the Lord. Amen. There are some people when you deal with them, when you're fighting them, you're fighting the whole host of heaven. Because their degree of closeness to the Lord demands that heaven must host them. Back them. In Umutu Omunaya, they don't move alone. When the late Archbishop Ben Sindahosa was on earth, he prayed that till he got to a point that any time he moves without even speaking, angels are ready to carry out his thoughts. He walks into a realm. You may not feel the presence of God, but you receive your miracle. He can stand there and put his hand on his chest. As long as I'm around, no demon will cross this path. Amen. And so will it be. Why? In that particular community or area or jurisdiction, he is there with angels that have filled the place up. So where would the demon stand or sit? I ask the Father to make you conscious of the angelic realm that he is put around you. Amen. There are some places when you get to the zone, it's no go area. But you can change the zone by the presence of the ministry of angels. So me, when I go to any meeting, I don't care who has ministered. I'm saying it in all humility. I don't care who has ministered. I don't care the anointing that has passed the place. I ride on my own anointing. Praise the Lord. The person may be more anointed than me. Now, I'm not there for competition. But I will not dwell on there because as I've, I'm, I'm standing, as I've stood, 
I have assistance in a certain realm. I cannot operate beyond the realm I have assistance in. Somebody will say, ah, I don't know as for this prophet, anytime he's ministering, this is how he ministers. That is because of the realm of assistance he has been made to operate within. If your angelic realm of assistance are within the ministry spirits, you can never command God's glory because cherubs and seraphs are not there. Some prophet can bring you an information and the information may not be correct because the one that brought him the information did not hear it from the throne. He heard it through another angel higher than him. So the information can be distorted. And the further away an information gets from the throne, the more it is getting away from the truth. So Lucifer, being at the throne, hears from God, understands what God is saying, but when it comes down, there are other angels who didn't understand what God said. So for him to explain it to them, he will tell them, what do you give in return for the information? Mm -hmm. Then they will say, oh, me, I don't have money, so I will, I will follow you everywhere you go to. So he exchanged the information for their loyalty. How do I know? Where is it written in the Bible? In Isaiah chapter 14, the Bible says, He trafficked trade. The word trade is business. Mm -hmm. What is trading? Buying and selling. So how did he traffic? Traffic is always an amalgamation. It's you have to see aha. Traffic. Traffic. So when it comes to them to give them information from the throne, he takes their allegiance and exchanges it with the information. Mm. The guy is too smart. Hallelujah. There are demons in the other world who are stronger than Satan. 